this meeting of the Montero Water and Sanitary District Board of Directors. It's October 19th, 2023 at 7.34 p.m. Uh, I'll do a roll call. Uh, Director Decker? Here. Director Slater Carter is not yet present. Uh, Director uh, Young? Present. Director Slotsky? Here. All right. Director Boyd is here. So four of the board directors being here. Um, I think for president statement, uh, I don't have... I honestly don't have anything tonight. Uh, do we have any oral comments for items that are I, not? I'd like to, um, I'd like to uh, actually ask this board to consider an emergency item uh, to consider a temporary basis. And what I'm talking about is really a speaker limit of two minutes during meetings. Um, and uh, so what this would essentially do is give the president the ability to um, cause the removal of the speaker from a meeting room or mute or disengage the uh, remote speaker after the allotted time expires. Okay, and uh, we're looking essentially at a way to address uh, the Zoom bombing that's currently happening. And we are in the process of um, actually drafting proposed rules that uh, would govern the conduct of the district meetings. And so we're suggesting to put this temporary measure in time until we actually, um, uh, then until the board can consider and adopt the rules that we need to dialogue. Um, so uh, I also want to reiterate that speakers uh, uh, could be removed if their comments uh, don't pertain to matters, to the subject matter or, or jurisdiction of the district, or don't relate to a specific agenda item or to an item that's previously considered in the prior meeting where there was an opportunity to comment. So, um, first, uh, if that is the pleasure of the board, I would uh, ask for a motion to add this item to the agenda but based on an urgency that arose after the agenda was posted and it requires immediate attention. That's it. Well, quick question. When you originally started stating the very beginning, you said limit the speaking to two minutes, but that does not include board members. That's just public oh, speaking yes. and only from remote or either in person or remote. We're just saying public speaking. Okay. Oh, then I make the motion. Thank you. Uh, second. Okay. That's what happens. Okay. So we. Uh, so let me take the vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion carries five zero. And now I'm looking for a motion to adopt a temporary speaker, public speaker limit of two minutes until such time as the board adopts the rules governing meeting conduct. I would like to add an amendment to that. Any speaker can send an email to the district for preview that can be sent to the board if they feel their time, if they feel they need more time. And they can do it after reading the agenda when it's posted or even after the meeting. Well, we don't need to amend the motion for that, but we could add that to our communication. I mean, let me say this way any email that uh, we receive uh, will, e will either be read out or put in a and actually placed in the uh, minutes. Uh, so this is the current practice already. Well, but I think it's important to reiterate it in this motion, so it's clear, so people don't, mm -hmm. so people don't take offense. Again, we're we're developing rules. I would suggest we leave it at what it is right now. Um, I can see that you know something like this is part of the rules that we are developing, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend that we leave it at current restriction um anyone can comment in writing and real and, and that is essentially what i'm saying we read this out loud um if it pertains to uh an agenda item if it pertains to this district and um uh, bill and I said, I, it seems to me that since we're going to actually be discussing this agenda item in depth <clears throat> within an hour or two that 
for the next couple of hours, we can get, go with simplified version and add the email codicil when we get into the discussion. That's not correct. Um, we're suggesting to implement this measure until we can bring the developed policies to this board. So we're talking about this meeting, potentially next meeting. Wow. Okay. So, um, just to clarify, um, the board of supervisors, be, like if it, the email comes in, from the beginning of the publication of the agenda, and then like within, I think it's 6 p.m. the night before the meeting, they publish those in the public record for that agenda item. But then if more come in after that, the clerk will read them or at least transmit those to the board. So what's your policy gonna be on that? Would you read someone's email out loud at the board meeting for them? We currently read any comment that we receive uh, with request to read it uh, at a board meeting. Okay. So they have to request it. I just want to clarify. Thanks. It's long been the practice that we've, we've done that. But I just haven't seen it. That's why. For the record, I will vote. I, I would like to see that amendment made so that people do not feel shut out for this meeting or the next. Well, we don't have to write into policy what we already have as policy. What we have to do is tell people about it so they can avail themselves of it. And why not just add it now then? I'd really keep this simple. Yeah, I'm still going to vote. No. So you do, do you need a motion for the, the second? Uh, no, I have a motion and a okay. second. Um, so it's been moved and seconded by Sid and Bill. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All no. opposed? Okay, so the motion passes four to one. Okay, let's continue now. Um, let's see, uh, did we have any other oral comments or items not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, uh, we have no public hearing, no consent agenda, no old business. Let's go to new business item one, review and possible action concerning review of Recology 2024 solid waste rate increase. Yeah, thank you, Scott. So uh, this is an item that we see every year uh, up on this agenda. We usually get um, around uh, September the financial statements from Recology. And uh, uh, our accountant, uh, Peter Medina, um, reviews the uh, statements and um, it essentially confers the calculation that from these uh, statements, there's a calculation in accordance with the contract that uh, specifies how such rate increases for each year for the college are determined. Um, this year we are at a, um, uh, this, this is an index-based calculation. We have two years of index-based calculations, and then we have uh, one year of cost-based adjustment factors. So here in index-based calculation, if the math is applied, um, we call it calculated uh, essentially an increase of 7.87%. However, we have negotiated a 6% cap in our latest amendment. Uh, so replacing that on the overall rate, uh, and that means there is 1.87% that could be added to next year's rate increase if that would keep the rates at or below 6% then. So um, we're asking, uh, we also carry a um, Prop 3 team rooms. We're running into this every year. It's uh, uh, time-wise a little bit difficult uh, to schedule. Uh, the Prop 3 team numbers that we prepared and we would also like authorization to send out um, shows a public hearing date uh, for the uh, Prop 218 for the for essentially the adoption of the rates for December 21, 2023. So here we have the question if everybody can actually attend this meeting on December 21st. 
Um, we have in the past also held these public hearings in, at the beginning of January. So uh, if there is a problem, um, we could think about moving this to January 4 instead. Uh, so we're looking for essentially uh, asking the board to receive the uh, uh, report from Peter Medina uh, and authorize the distribution of the Prop 218 notice. And um, so with that, we'd, we'd like to know what the preference is for December 21st or January 3rd. So I have a question before we go into dates. Um, I was um, going through financial hardship and um, called to let them know that I had the CARES um, thing through PG&E at Recology. And I found out at that time that the smallest gray receptacle, which is the one I had, doesn't apply for the CARES discount in our district, but it does in Pacifica. So when do we negotiate those kind of things? Maybe they've changed it, but Chris made a special accommodation for me because it sounded like it wasn't fair that it's more expensive to have the smallest container weekly than it would be to have the discount on the mid-sized container. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the gray containers. So when do we negotiate our contract? Um that's a good question. I think we have quite a number of years actually left on it. Uh -huh. I think it's a 10 year contract. And okay. we we're probably in year five or so. Yeah. Uh, we have actually the recology manager here, Glenn Bondi. So, yeah. I, Glenn, I don't know if you can add something. Hi, Glenn. It's a, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's really loud. Yes. Am I yelling? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> He's turning it down. He's turning it down. Okay. Is it better now? Much better. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Clemens, we can talk. We're open to negotiate ahead of time, and we can, we're can we willing to do that. So, I would have no problem opening this up for discussion. Well, I, only, and, and, I don't know if I still have the floor, but I recently right. joined the board, so maybe it's changed in the meantime. So you might want to just check if the Montero price is similar to the um, Pacifica price on the smallest container for people experiencing hardships. Because it's the, I remember when I called the office to let them know I had the CARES um, PG&E discount, they said that it only applied to the mid-sized container and the large container. So I ended up talking with Chris and, you know, I don't know if it's been changed on the actual contract here since then. So ne the next year, like, is a cost-based review. So we can open the entire contract up and look at different details. And if this is something that we'd like to put in the contract, next year is the year we can add it. Sounds fair. And we, Sounds fair. We can, and we can do comparisons too. Thank you, Glenn. All right, thanks. Do we have any other, uh, Catherine? Um, I am concerned that the folks who are on the edge financially but don't qualify for special uh, government subsidies are asking the public at large to pay for them. And I think it's a serious issue. Somebody in the, your company should look at what the, what the effect of the um, of of this lower rate is, because the cost will get passed on somewhere. And um, so, I'm I'm concerned that where the that cost will get passed on. Okay. Any, we will look into it. Any further comments, sir? Uh, Bill? It seems that when we open the discussion about this, the balance of making sure that nobody is suddenly penalized anymore will naturally be put in a trade off with weird inconsistencies, which just often show up when rules are made the first time. So that's this isn't probably the time to discuss it, but I agree those things absolutely need to be talked about all in one. Time. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, what's in front of us? Uh, let's see, I lost my reference. So, 
Any objection to receiving the uh, RVE cons accounting and advisory consultants report? No objections. So uh, we <clears throat> accepted that. And um, now, is staff direction enough to, to, or do we need to vote on authorizing the Prop 218? Well, we need to know state to plug into the Prop 218 notice. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, like authorization. So, uh, on the 24th, we have an echo from this room. One of the few, can you please mute your mic, please? We're getting cross talk. Thanks, Glenn. Right. Thank you. All right. December 21st, is that a problem for anyone? All right. Let's do it for the 21st. Then. Okay. Perfect. Good. Okay. Uh, then let's move on to item two, new business, review and possible action concerning approval of preliminary funding commitment for the Valamar sewer and water relocation project. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, uh, we, we've been actually uh, informing the board uh, some time ago, we applied for a federal grant um, to essentially, I'm just going to say sort out the utilities in Valamar Street. Um, that's a, a just a zoomed out uh, a view of this. If you have a sewer main line that uh, is in the strand, um, and the strand is not existing anymore, so it's directly at the bluff. So the uh, uh, situation is quite some time that uh, you know, with any storm could potentially the deadline would fail. Uh, the line, fortunately, is not really in use except for emergency situation, the sewer authority mid coast type he uses it operationally uh, uh, to, to bypass sewage uh, to the uh, from the Weimar pump station to the Montero pump station. So that's off Samstack can bypass that. Um, so we want to keep that function. So there is. Um, now, um, an opportunity that uh, we also are working together with the Cemetery of Counties Resource Conservation, Conservation District, um, uh, where we can, uh, where the RCD actually is applying and um, for, uh, for, um, and, and the plan is hopefully also administering uh, for a grant and. Um, that grant uh, is essentially the decision is made at the California Coast Conservancy about this. Um, and at this point, we actually received notice from the RCD that the Coastal Conservancy looks at the project uh, um, favorable and would like to bring it to the board at the end of this month. And so we are asked to essentially state that we are uh, capable of contributing um, $272,000 to uh, the cost of $1.84 million to essentially design uh, this entire project. So this is only for the design and implementation would be um, hopefully uh, another grant um, that follows after this. So uh, we're asking the board to adopt the resolution of the Board of the Montero Water and Sanitary District cert certifying the availability of district share of funds for the Biomar sewer and water relocation project. Do you have any uh, questions or are we ready to go to a motion? It's sewer and water. Yes. Oh, okay. I only saw sewer on here earlier. I guess I didn't read it well. And it's really the Niagara pump station that's involved, right? I didn't see on the picture. It didn't show one for Valley. I'm just going to say, so the project is not designed, okay? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we're looking at designing the project, and I think <laughs> that's when I can probably answer your question. Okay. All right. No problem. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion? This is, a motion. this is to adopt the resolution. Second. Second. Oh, go ahead. Okay. So, yeah. 
Okay, we have we have to move and seconded to adopt the resolution uh, of the board of the Montero Water Sanitary District certifying availability of the district share of funds for the Valamar sewer and water relocation project. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you, Clements. All right, let's go to reports. Um, anything from the sewer authority metro side? Yes. Shall I wait? Shall I recommend? Yes, please. All right. Let me know when. That would be that was your win. I'm sorry, I'm so slow. Uh, at the meeting last night, at Monday, and I suggest everyone watch it. Um, the first item was the SRT design work for the uh, Sam Intertie pipeline between Montera and Granada. Um, Half Moon Bay was oddly quiet, not making any demands. And um, so we got to the end of discussion, and I suggest everybody watch that. That's a, it, was a, it was a very good staff report. Um, but my spidey sense told me that simply giving approval for it to go ahead was not safe for Montero or Granada. And um, so I asked for a vote so that I could know and the attorneys can know and ERF can know, the engineer can know, the project has full support. There's no point in spending money on another $10 on a project that doesn't have full support to go forward. So I called the question. I, I got a motion in a second. And we took a roll call vote. Montero voted yes. Renata voted yes. And Half Moon Bay abstained. Um, which is it takes a majority vote of five to pass something at Sam. Mm. Our attorney was telling him, you did, it doesn't call for a vote. Half Moon Bay was chiming in, and this does not call for a vote. I said, I want a vote. I want everyone on the record. I'll what they think of that. It got a little heated. And Half Moon Bay, I, I said, look, I don't know what Half Moon Bay has up their sleeve, but I'm guessing it's something. I was then a few moments later called a bully by Half Moon Bay, <laughs> who was calling for everyone on the board to chime in and call me a bully. Yeah. So I knew something was seriously up. So I changed my vote from a support to a, um, uh, to, to tie in with Pat Moon Bay's point. At which point they started saying that I was going against the environment. I didn't want the pipe fixed. And once again, the attorney said, well, you had a consensus. And I said, a consent, that's, we don't have a consensus. A definition of a consensus is a majority. And oftentimes, a unanimous decision. Um, so then I said to Half Moon Bay, you could easily override my abstention by one of you changing your vote. It will then be five votes to three votes. <laughs> well, they were adamant. They were not <laughs> going to change their vote. No reason. 
just insinuation. Um, so we left it at that. I have um, my suspicions about what's going on. Um, but rather than make my suspicions public across the internet and everything, I'm not going to do that. Um, but I'm going to be working with um, Jeremy Young Rice and Keishan to look at what in the JPA we can read and believe that Half Moon Bay was up to. And I believe they were up to not paying for the 60, their share of the $16 million of the pipeline replacement. And so we left it as um, if work is going to proceed, it goes at the behest of the of the general manager, but I have also asked to have it on an, a, a, another agenda. So that's what's going on at Sam right now. The other thing that's going on at Sam right now is November 18th, there's an open house. Everyone is invited. Children are invited with their parents. Dogs on leash are invited. And um, it's they're going to have light snacks and refreshments. It's a very exciting thing. The staff has been working very hard to get us prepared for the probable storms that are coming system-wide. And um, so I would encourage everyone to please come on November 18th at the sand plant 10 to 2. Okay. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, like I say, it's a good time for people to thank the crew at SAM. They are the most important environmental agency on the coast. <laughs> Our streets are clean. Our beaches are clean. Um, our creeks and other in, uh, natural habitats are clean. And when we generally, when we flush the toilet, it goes to half one day and it gets treated. The other thing that we were talking about was being, was each district putting out a note of some sort, either on next door or whatever, that if it looks like the um, plant cannot handle the upcoming storm flows, that everybody use less water in their home. It can make a, a significant difference, um, probably 8 to 10%. So not cutting your shower short, taking a quick shower instead of a long bath, that kind of thing. When the storm is coming, that's a good plan. Okay. So, uh, saw your hand, sir. Yes. Um, I, I watched the SAM board meeting and I think Peter was there. And my feeling was that they didn't have to vote, so that's why they abstained. And um, I know they may have some ulterior motive because I wouldn't put it past them, but um, on the other hand, because of the owl setup, it was hard to hear all the cross talk because they weren't um, raising their hand and waiting to be addressed, you know, to address the audience or whatever. They, they were all over talking one another, so it did get a little embarrassingly out of hand. So I don't know. I I don't like to see that kind of public forum happening. But um well, you have comment. I I just said that um I don't think that that might not be why they were um 
abstaining. What was your feeling, Peter? Do you did you feel that they were just we weren't required to have a vote? Was so my understanding from the attorney? We can come back to Peter in a second. Yeah, Bill sorry. had his hand up. I, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I having not been there, I'll defer to the lawyer for how it worked, but. The idea of using administrative authority to flush transparency into the open is a good idea anyway, especially when there are parties who have historically been less than transparent. So insofar as it happened the way you said, I applaud it. Um, the second thing, the last thing about essentially in case of severe storm, conveying the message to save water, that seems to me to be such a tremendously simple and obvious thing that... I would propose, I don't know if I'm actually proposing it here formally, but I think a great idea would be a sideboard by the entrance to the post office with like a big red or yellow or orange or green or whatever. But it shows up and it's a physical thing that everybody in Montero can see as soon as they walk in saying next three days, save water or whatever language we choose. But it would cost us nothing to make a physical announcement in the physical post office in addition to next door. Let's note we have two post offices. Peter, did you want to chime in? Yeah, the um, the, the discussion going back and forth clearly indicated, as in the past has happened with Huffington Bay, that Huffington Bay was not willing to contribute to the cost of the pipeline. Whether it's paying on the protest or whether it's um, not wanting to vote with the board, um, all of it needs to be very clear to the public that there is only one party that holds back the immediate uh, installation of that pipeline. And um, it is essential that this pipeline is being replaced, both because of the lawsuit, as well as um, out of sheer necessity. Um, the solution at the end was that we will wait for the outcome of the lawsuit that will then force Afrobe into paying for the pipeline. The, the hesitation that Catherine and I have is even when after we would win the we meeting uh, Avilada and MWSD, even if we would win the loss, we have somewhat of a, of a doubt that we then smoothly get out of the way to agree to pay for the replacement of the enforcement. And that is a real concern. And there are legal angles to that that we need to explore, and therefore Catherine's suggestion that she discuss this in more detail is good. Sure. Okay. Let's uh, move on. Thank you. Let's move on. Uh, Mid Coast Community Council, Greg, do you have anything for us? Uh, just a few quick things. Uh, I also don't recall having a public comment on the uh, the Valimar pump station thing that you just voted on, but it looked okay to me, so I didn't have anything to say. Um, as far as recent updates, the MCC, I, I don't know if I've covered this before, but off-leash dog walking at Quarry Park seems to have been approved. The MCC endorsed it with a request for a little more enforcement to keep dogs on leash in a play area that's often used by kids. Um, we had a serious uh, presentation with uh, the planning department about the Moss Beach Corridor project on Highway 1. It's entering the phase now where they're going to evaluate alternatives, which look to be either three signals or one signal and two roundabouts um, between California and Cypress and 16th Street. Uh, decisions and recommendations and deployment on that effort are going to stretch all the way to 2030. And the trail still won't reach to Montera. Um, Len Erickson, who you, some of you know, has been involved on transportation matters for two decades, is working on getting the trail extended to Montera so that uh, pedestrians and bicyclists have a way to get up here. Um, and he's also trying to get some action on Surfer's Beach at Highway 1, uh, which is vulnerable. Um, upcoming issues are herbicide use on the mid coast. We have citizens who are concerned that they're using poison to uh, suppress weeds, especially on parks property. So we're gonna have a session on that this Wednesday. And then the RCD is gonna hold the session with parks on November 1st to discuss this issue. I think I've spoken about the damage on Montero Mountain back in early June. 
Uh, research so far has shown that uh, the county may have declared an emergency in order to get access to some funds they wouldn't have been able to get to do the work. But a bigger issue for us is the potential for erosion and environmental damage because they didn't seem to do a gentle job on what they did. So we're going to cover that. And then finally, we're working on a stormwater report. I think I've touched based on the fact that the County of San Mateo has no stormwater management master plan um, and is kind of unique in the Bay Area for that. Uh, we will touch base with Montero Water and Sanitary District about what we're going to put in that report just to make sure that uh, what we're claiming is in alignment with the facts that uh, Montero sees. Um, but we have serious concerns uh, and I could go into more detail once the report's available, but that's it for me. Any questions? Ted? Oh, um, Michelle, thanks to Michelle Dragony. I saw that they're going to have the ribbon cutting for the Murata Bridge finally four years after the fact and um, on November 3rd at 1.30 to 2.30 for all the interested parties that have been waiting for a long time on that bridge to finally be allowed to be used on the coastal trail. Thanks, Michelle. All right, uh, let's see, Catherine, anything for CSDA or LACO? Uh, no, LACO didn't have a meeting this week and I don't think anything significant, I was not told anything significant happened. Um, and I am attending the Special District Leadership Conference on Sunday through Tuesday. Um, it's being paid for by the Harbor District. Okay. Uh, let's see, any attorney's report? Uh, no report. All right, thank you. Any director's reports? Okay. Uh, general manager's report? No report. Okay. Anything uh, for future agendas? Uh, okay, we are going to uh, say farewell to our public and then reconvene in closed session, uh, during which we will talk about uh, two existing cases, uh, City of Papua Bay versus uh, the rest of us, and uh, something about uh, aqueous film forming foams products liability litigation, MDL number to call an 18 dash MN dash 02873. That's what we have written down. Um, it doesn't really explain it to us much. I see in uh, parentheses, uh, City of Camden et al versus the 3M company. Okay, with that, uh, we are uh, in recess. Thank you all for joining. And uh, we will reconvene in, uh, let's, let's make it uh, 20 after by the uh, wall.